Hey guys, this is Matt for cgtouch.com and this is just a quick tip tutorial on how to create this screw head object in Modo using subdivision surface modeling. So I'm going to create a new scene. We're going to start by creating the geometry of the screw head itself. So I'm going to come up to the basic tab and click on the sphere tool. And you can see I've put in some settings down here. I've basically centered it in our scene. I've set the radius on each axis to 5 millimeters, which is just a rough estimate of the size of the average screw. Now the sides and segments are both set to 12, and with that done I'm going to hit apply to create that geometry in our scene. And I'm going to remember to hit space before we continue moving around. Now obviously we don't need the bottom half of this, so I'm going to select two polygons, hit L to loop and backspace to delete them, and I'm going to double click this bottom object and hit backspace to get rid of that as well. Now at the moment this is looking a little bit too dome-like for my liking, so we're going to go into a side view, activate the scale tool and making sure that our action center is set to automatic, I'm going to right click at the base of the object and then scale it down using the green handle. And this is just until it looks a little bit more screw-like, so about there looks pretty good to me, so I'm going to hit space to drop the tool and go back to perspective mode. Now at the moment we have perhaps slightly too many polygons in this object, and I say that because when we're using subdivision surface modeling, we want to let that subdivision surface do the work for us in creating nice smooth poly flows and nice curves. When you have too many points or too many polygons in an object, you have to go in more and manually move things into place, and it's the same when you create a curve or something in Photoshop. You know that if you only have three points on the curve, it's fairly easy to maintain a nice smooth shape, but if you have like 12 points or 15 points or something like that, you have to go in and manually move those points into position to maintain the same curve. So wherever you can, kind of minimize the poly count on your object before you do complicated subdivision surface modeling. So in this case, I'm going to go in and double click this edge, this edge, and this edge, and I'm just going to hit backspace to get rid of them. And this just halves our poly count and makes it a little bit easier to deal with. So now I'm going to come up and name this layer to screw top. And then I'm going to create a new item and name this to cross, and this is where we're going to create our cross object. So I'm going to come up to the basic tab and click on the cube tool, and you can see that I've essentially positioned it in the center of our scene and set the size to 2 millimeters. And this again is just a rough estimate, there's nothing uh, set in stone here. So with that done, I'm going to hit apply and space to drop the tool. And you can see that at the moment it's hidden beneath our screw top object. So I'm going to double click those polygons and move them up so it sits kind of half above and half below that object, like that. Now we need to turn this into a cross object, so I'm going to select two faces on either side, hit B for bevel, right click to activate and pull these out slightly. And what we can do is set the shift value to 2 millimeters, which is the same 2 millimeters we put into the settings on our box tab. And this just creates a nice even cross. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side here. So change the, oh, messed up that. Try again, bevel, and change the shift to two millimeters, and hit space to drop the tool. Now with that done, we want to go in and select these outer edges. So I'm going to select two, hold down up on my keyboard to select the rest of the way around, and then hit B for bevel, right click, and just bevel these edges slightly. And again, really no kind of um, right way to do this, it's just what looks right to you. So when you're done, hit space to drop the tool. I can then go into a top view, and at the moment we have on this screw top object in the background, we have this edge here and this edge here, which is running through the center of this cross object. And this is just gonna make things a little bit more complicated for us later on. So we're gonna fix this now by double clicking at the entire object and rotating it just ever so slightly like that. And what this does is it makes these edges here kind of point towards these corners instead of intersecting right through the middle of this cross object. And this will just make things a little bit easier to line up later on. So with that done, I'm going to hit space to drop the tool and go into perspective mode. And making sure that we have our screw top layer selected and our cross layer visible in the background, I'm going to come up to the mesh edit tab and right down the bottom of here is one of my favorite tools, the solid drill tool. And when we click this, with these settings in place, what it's going to do is use the cross object, which is our background layer, to tunnel through the foreground layer, or our screw top object. And what this will do is just create a nice cross-shaped hole in our screw top. So I'm going to click OK, and hide our cross object, and you can see that that's exactly what's happened. We've got this nice cross-shaped hole in our screw top object. Now whenever you do a solid drill or a boolean function, the first thing you should always do is go to vertex and merge and make sure that you set it to automatic and click OK. 
Now, in this case, no vertices have been merged together, but it's always a really good kind of habit to get into because when you use a Boolean function, there's usually vertices flying all over the place and it's really good to clean them up before you start doing any more work. So I'm going to click OK. Then we can go in and I'm going to tab out of subdivision mode and zoom in on this corner here. Now you can see at the moment we've got these two verts which are very close together. We've also got this vert which is sitting right in the middle of this n-gon. We need to basically join these up and create a quad model. So instead of doing this on each one of these corners, the best thing to do would maybe to work on a quarter of the object and then clone it round into position once we're done. So to do that I'm going to go to a top view. I'm going to use the slice tool to slice across the model making sure that down here in the settings the Z value is set to zero in both the start and the end box and hit space to drop the tool. Then I'll do the same thing down the middle like that, making sure that the X values are both zero and click space to drop the tool. Now with that done we can select the bits that we don't want to keep, so I'm going to come down like that and select this entire section of the model and hit backspace to get rid of it. Now we can get back into perspective and kind of work out how to fix this model. And the first thing I'm going to do is select this vert and then shift click this vert and we're going to join these together. We're going to do the same thing over here as well. I'm going to click that guy, then that guy and join them together as well. And then we need to sort out these end gons and to do that I'm going to hit C to bring up the edge slice tool and drag an edge from there down to there and back up to this other side like so. And this creates these four quads in there and now this object is completely fixed. So what we need to do is basically clone it back into position around the origin point. So I'm going to come up here to the duplicate tab and click on the radial array and with a count of four and replace source um, uh, selected, if I right click in our scene it will use the center of this object as the point that it needs to rotate around and that's not what we want. We want it to rotate around the origin. So I'm going to undo that come up to action center and click origin and then right click and you'll see we get our screw object back. So I'm going to hit space to drop the tool and make sure we set our action center back to automatic before we forget. Now with this done we're going to go to the vertex tab and click merge to make sure we merge any vertices together and then we can go in and delete these edges that we don't need. So I'm going to double click all of these guys and hit backspace to get rid of them. Now all we need to do is create the kind of inset into the body of the screw using this cross object. So I'm going to double click this entire loop and hit P to create a polygon. Now in some cases this will work, in some cases it won't work, and in this case I'm pretty sure this is going to be classed as a fail. So what I'm going to do is hit undo to get rid of that and we're going to help out that process slightly. So I'm going to go in and select these verts in here, so these 12, in a clockwise direction. And I hit P to create a polygon in the center. I'll then double click this edge loop and hit P this one and hit P and do the same for these two as well. And with all of these polygons selected I'm going to hit B for bevel and inset them a little tiny bit, shift click to reactivate the bevel and then move them down and you'll notice that we get a big error straight away. And this is obviously something that we don't want so I'm going to undo that. Um, we've already right clicked to create the polygons and instead of moving down using the bevel handle I'm going to activate the move tool and manually move them down slightly and you'll see that they move down as expected. Now I'm going to hit B key for bevel again, right click, and again use the move tool to move them down into the main body. And I'm going to activate the scale tool, and with negative scale turned off I'm going to slam those down on the Y. Now once these are flat in our scene we can actually go ahead and use the bevel as normal and move it down and we don't get that weird error, so that's just something to look out for there. So I'm going to bevel it down once, shift click, and then in set it. Hit space to drop the tool, and you can see if I go to subdivision surface mode we get our nice screw shape. So the final thing we need to do basically is go in and quad up this bottom section. So I'm just going to use the edge slice tool, which is C on your keyboard, to just go in and add in some extra cuts in here to make these all into quads. So I'm just going to keep going over here. And then finally we've got these guys up here and these guys down here as well. And with that done, we have our screw top completed. Now the final thing you could do is select this bottom edge, extend this down with the Z key, like so, then activate the edge extend again and activate the scale tool and then scale these in using the green circle just to create a little lip at the bottom there. With that done we can go to a side view and make sure that all of this sits on top of the uh, floor plane like so and we have our screw created.
So I hope that's been helpful. If you have any questions or comments, just leave me a note below, or you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Bad Granola. That's B-A-D-G-R-E-N-O-L-A. Or if you have any ideas for further quick tips that I could do, uh, just leave me a note below. But uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, cheers, guys.